Hello everyone, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access, where I'm going to test out the wobbliness of rockets a little bit and see how big a rocket I can make, but we're not hitting the limits on that just yet. I've only got large tanks on the outside here. We're going with a relatively small rocket here, uh, but it is still 1,800 tons. I will scale up in later videos of the same vein, and the goal here is to try to get to the moon and back as quickly as possible in game time. So I'm sure challenges like this have been done before, but I haven't done it. So I'll, I'm going to try it now. And so we have Oodles of Delta V. The key is that we have to go to the moon, capture around the moon, and then return. Not a free return trajectory or anything like that. So we have to use a whole lot of Delta V to go really fast. Then we have to cut all that velocity. And then we have to use as much velocity as we can to return. Uh, to that end, we have this ridiculous stack with the little Mark 1 pod at the top, and I have used the uh, coronet there, and then we have the trumpet, and then we have the huge nuclear engine at the bottom here after a whole bunch of extra large hydrogen tanks, and then we have large tanks and the Mammoth 2s. Uh, this is not the largest rocket I can make, and this is probably not the most extreme one that could be used for this purpose, However, uh, I think it's a good start. So we'll start with this, we'll see what we can do. And to test the wobbliness, I have put no struts on here. We have no struts, we do have the largest of the stabil stabilizers, as they call them, reaction wheels, of course. Uh, so we have the large reaction wheel there, uh, so that we can turn this whole contraption, because actually we'll probably get into orbit and still have the boosters on. <laughs> Uh, they have 4,590 meters per second, and so we are going to use them to help us transfer to the moon, hopefully, and start us off on that. But we have no struts on here right now. I'm going to see if we need struts. That's thing number one. And, of course, with this being set up the way it is, will there be wobbliness? Let's just find out. Well, first of all, First of all, uh, we might need a few more launch claps, it looks like, as we just busted some of our engines. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, okay, all right, so noted. Uh, uh, vessel lost control due to hibernating, apparently. I wanted to get into daylight so that we can start off in daylight. There we go. So we're, we will recover it now. Oh, more things fell apart. Okay, hold on. Uh, recover vessel. Yes, confirm. Uh, oh. Oh. Oh, I, when I uh, time warp, some things disappear. Or things hop. Time warping and coming out of time warp uh, definitely makes things hop. Even here. On the moon, I suppose it'd be even worse. Oh, you know what? Uh... Yeah, you know what? Fine, I'll revert. We should not only get this rocket stable, we should get it stable enough so that when we time warp, it will remain stable after we come out of time warp. So, first of all, more launch clamps. Let's just try that without any uh, struts between the boosters and the core. Well, okay. I think we might need just need to just put the struts. <laughs> oh... I mean, of course, uh, I've been at this long enough that I lived through the early strut days of KSP-1 and we put struts all over the place. Uh, this is actually not that bad compared to the way it used to be. It's mild by comparison. But uh, since the advent of auto-strutting people and also sort of uh, Kerbal Joint Reinforcement, People have not gotten used to strutting things, and the camera does weird things. During construction of the rocket, I didn't have too many problems. The only problem I had during construction in the VAB, and this is just to report it, is that building the interstage fairing is really irritating. So, just that, really. Okay, two struts on each booster. Let's see if that gives us what we need. Okay, seems like two struts on each booster does it. And 
Can we time warp and come out of time warp safely? Let's find out. So I want to time warp to daylight. I'll try and come out of time warp carefully. Uh, okay, well, it didn't blow up yet. Alright then. Well, I can't use my throttle, right? Okay, uh, throttle is already up. Ignition and launch. Uh, okay, that's the structural linkage. Now TT, that's the decoupler. Decoupler in the tank. Okay, well, maybe we should use larger decouplers. They are pretty large boosters. I don't know if that makes any difference though. I think maybe we'll just put extra struts, but you know, it was holding together sort of. I mean, basically every version of KSP2 right now will require different strutting, right? Because they're adjusting that sort of thing. So we can never tell without experimenting how many we actually need. Another solution to this is to have a controller at the bottom and control from that instead of at the top where it's going to be wobbly. Alright, four struts on each booster and this time we'll let go of the launch clamps after igniting. Out of time warp. A... Ignition. And launch. Okay, four struts apiece. There you have it. Well, okay, except it's wobbling a lot. Okay, 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 let's let's cut. Oh no! Okay. So uh no, I'll probably not revert to launch. Probably we need to control from something lower down instead of from the Mark 1 pod. So, I am going to add a controller where we have the reaction wheel here. I'll just go for a large one since we have a large reaction wheel. And I'm actually going to... Well, we could just say control... Let's try control from there first. And then after that, uh, we will... We will actually make it the root part if that's not enough. Alright, ignition. Well, that was quicker. Hmm. I think they just enjoy their explosions too much. We are making this the root part. Okay. Well, it's still wobbly. Hmm. We have a persistent down pitch here on the nav ball. You see that? Now why on earth would that be? Well, a tap of W has reset it, so maybe that's a good idea. We are twice as tall as a tower. Alright, ignition. And launch. Maybe that little residual pitch, no, it's other things. Okay, it seems like a structural failure between HFT-500 and HFT, so that's within the vessel. Between one tank or another, and another. This is version 0.1.5, and I have the Steam version, and I... It's a new save and everything, I don't know what else to say. So you are one of these. It's uh, between those. Alright, you know what? I am going to put the controller at the bottom. Okay, controller at the bottom of the rocket. We could run struts between the hydrogen tanks. That's another thing we can do. And then we're also going to control from that controller. And we're going to actually make it the root part, which is weird, but... Let's try that. Uh, it seems to be operating worse than when we added that uh, than before we added the controllers, so that's a bit of a problem. Uh, 
Oh, did did Valentina decide not to take this ride anymore? <laughs> Don't blame her. Uh, well, that shape doesn't bode well. And yeah, we've still we've got both pitch and yawn. Let me just reset all those. But resetting it did not help last time. Okay. I'm gonna go up for a bit. We've been having problems after all. But yeah, moving the controller to the bottom of the stack seems to be the way to go. And the controller is the root part as well. I don't know if not making it the root part would be fine if we just say control from here instead, whether that would be sufficient. But, but right now it is the root part. Which is probably why Valentina didn't go in there. I want mission time. That's important to us in this case with our goals. Okay, we'll coast here. Can we actually do a direct burn? Um, yeah, should be able to. So we should be able to just burn for the moon the next burn. Let's plot that. Um, we actually want to go much faster than normal, right? But we should, like, check how much it takes to make orbit once we do this. So let's say we spend 3,650, right? It's not bad periapsis, though. In 53 minutes, so like six times the normal time. Well, there's the moon. We have to wait a little bit extra because of how fast we're getting there. Well, hopefully the burn timer is magically right this time. Go. Well, that bar doesn't look right at all, so that's a problem. Okay. We're already on escape out of the Kerbin system, but we're going much faster than that. <laughs> so, or trying to. Let's see. That's our ship. Well, not as accurate as we'd like. If I do it during time warp, our periapsis doesn't seem to change. When I take it out of time warp, oh, not pause, that's for sure. When I take it out of time warp, our periapsis visibly changes. But during the time warp, it doesn't. See? So, that seems incorrect I, I would like the feedback thank you I wonder if we can make this a brachiostrom thing or whatever it's called where we continually burn first burning towards the target and then burning retro in order to slow down could we get that fast I mean already we're getting there in hopefully under an hour Okay, that's getting us further away from... Alright, alright. We can continue burning. I mean, we should at least try and use half of the Delta V we had in this stage. We had 13,000. We should at least use 6,000. Well, at this point, we are reaching lunar, peri lunar periapsis an hour after launch. So that's pretty good. We've been continuously burning from our initial orbit around Kerbin. Timing-wise, there's a seriously diminishing returns to going any faster than this right now. The time to periapsis is not ticking down that fast compared to our actual timer, right? At some point, I'll have to start slowing down. Probably I'll just wait until we're in Mooner SOI and start. I do wonder why they sometimes flash one meter per second, though. A time to SOI entry would be really useful right now, too. Just to give me an idea how long I have in there. Oh, and the burn times. Well, there is the equation. I could probably work out the burn time by hand. I think it's 49.2 49 kilogram, 49 kilograms per second. Which seems to track the way it's ticking down there, too. Now, 
the reason I want the SOI time is if we know how many seconds there are in Lunar SOI, then we'd be able to figure it out like that. But, okay, so let's say how much do we have with 30 tons? How much time? That's about 10 minutes and 9 seconds. So if 30 tons was 10 minutes, we're probably down to 9 minutes now. Okay, so in 16 minutes to periapsis. Alright, there's Kerbin, there's us, going really, really fast. To the moon. But we'll need more than 9 minutes to slow down, because our orbital speed is that fast. We will need to use the next stage. We're not going back to Kerbin as fast as we went over here. And is it really safe to re-enter? Well, we don't have re-entry heat, so it's just a matter of how well the atmosphere will slow us down before we smack into the surface. That is the question. Well, we should probably start slowing down now, but I'll wait until we're inside the SOI. Okay, well, there's the moon. So yeah, we're uh, if we just go by the fact that it's going to take eight and a half minutes to burn, uh, it would seem like we don't have enough time. However, as we slow down, it's going to take longer to get to periapsis. So there's that too. But probably not that long. <laughs> so it might be that we uh, have taken too long to start this burn. Uh, it's too bad Val decided to skip out on this trip. Well, here we go. There's about four minutes left of this stage remaining. Yeah, we're about to pass periapsis, so it's gonna get difficult. I don't know how many people have seen an orbital speed like this when passing by the moon at this height, but here we are. This would be weird even passing by Earth's moon. I don't know how long we have until we get out of Moonar SOI. But I think we can capture. Staging is going to be tricky because we're still controlling from down here. Let's see if it ends up being debris that we can't control or something. Okay, so separation. Okay, I think we are controlling from it. All right. Um, or not. Uh, here. Needs crew. Oh, no. Ah, uh, Val, why did he do this to us? Hmm. We should have put a controller on. Okay. Well, all right. So we got to the moon in 51 minutes, I mean, uh, well, where we are right now around the moon. Uh, we got here in record time and we learned something about wobbly rockets. We're going to try this again and we're going to try and do it a little bit better so that we don't pass by the moon quite so much. Okay, so this time we need to make sure that Val is actually in the pod. I don't know why she wasn't in the pod. I mean, it, it shows, shows her here. Now let's take it outside and see. Okay, so, mission elapsed time, and ignition, and launch. Alright. This time I'm not throwing down. I don't think I needed to last time either. But after all the explosions, could you blame me? Seemed prudent. He set his target. This time I'll probably start burning to the moon sooner too. Well, that's getting a little bit out of control. I mean, we ultimately did like 6,000. Let's go for 6,000, yeah. Let's try that. Alright, that's pretty close. 
So we're burning, it says, until we get to the end of the red line there. That's sort of like, it's not quite burning halfway, but it's good. It's good. And I think we'll start early. Well, the moon is rising there. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure the timer is wrong anyway, so we might as well go. I can fix it later. Let's ignite. Okay. Off those go. Basically pointing at the moon right there. Okay, we are well under an hour to periapsis. Even given the retro burn time, I think we'd be pretty good right now to get into orbit in an hour, I think. If we pull it off right this time. We got foul this time. Ah, I think we can definitely get rid of the original burn. That's not helping at all. Those are our boosters going out on escape. <laughs> Alright, managing my periapsis all the way here. Uh, we're oh, about 41 minutes from launch to periapsis, it says there. Of course, we are going to slow down. Right now, we're at 15 minutes left of burn time in this stage. And we have been burning continuously again up to here. So, all the way from low carbon orbit to now. This was somewhat more efficient, I think, because I started to burn earlier than the burn time had it, which we should probably have just started right from launch. I think starting right from launch would have been even better uh, without any pause at all. This time, right when our orbital speed and delta v in this stage are equal, I will stop. Okay, there we go. They are equal. And currently we have, let's say, 12 and a half minutes of burn time in the stage. Okay, we are poised to slow down, but let's get a little bit closer. I'm gonna say T minus 10 minutes. We've got 12 and a half minutes of burn time. But we'll start at T minus 10 minutes. Okay, retro. We're now burning towards Kerbin, but it's completely irrelevant. There's the moon. I'm not using any time warp right now because I sort of don't trust it. <laughs> but, you know. Okay, well, time is now 9 minutes, and we have 9 minutes of burn time. I'm gonna slow down. Well, we gotta thrall down here, I think. Okay, we are in Lunar SOI finally. The moon once again draws ever closer. But this time we are poised to make orbit in a better way. Now, getting back is a whole other thing, right? That is a whole other thing. We could probably have gone a little bit faster, though. We left a little bit of Delta V in this stage that we could have... I mean, we could use it to boost back home, or start that off, but still. We could have used it to get here quicker. Okay, well, I'm gonna cut it for a little bit. Okay, we're a bit early still. Okay, we're in a pretty tight orbit there. And that's 46 minutes and 48 seconds, we'll say. And now we have to go back. We'll round out the orbit. I'll be good about it. Okay, not perfect, but good enough. Let's try and plot a return to Kerbin with... Great haste. And not trust it at all, but that's a separate issue. Um, it's not letting me increase the delta v past what we have right there. It doesn't. Uh, well, because we 
in theory don't have it. Uh, if I control from the Mark 1 pod right now, will we have it? But will we also crush the tanks? It doesn't really read that we have the Delta V if we click control from there anyway. So, uh, well, maybe I'll just figure it out. Going that fast, it's 5 hours and 38 minutes. That's four hours. Okay, so that's probably the way we want to go, like that. Basically, pointing more and more at Kerbin itself would be a good idea. Okay, I'll start burning a bit here. Help us turn. Okay, it's very confused right now. Does not know whether I'm ground or orbital, apparently. Hopefully we can end its confusion soon. <laughs> okay, whatever. Looking good. Okay, so... Well, staging. Okay. And we are off. Uh... Let's target Earth. Oh, not Earth. Kerbin. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe I should plot something. Well, that's 2,000 meters per second. Yeah, it seems to get us there in an hour. Oh, it's not reading the next stage. What the heck? Fine. 45 minutes. I mean, that's still a total journey of under two hours. But we do have another stage, and... Gosh darn it, we could use it. Alright, well, we are departing the moon. I'm distraught that we might not be able to use all of our potential Delta V here. We'll see. Okay, that's that stage. The staging works okay here. No, oh, that space bar did not work. Okay. And we keep trying to get ourselves closer, faster, ever faster. My hope is to actually come to a landing Two hours after liftoff will be wonderful. Now we're already at 4,900 meters per second. How quickly will we be hitting the atmosphere? Now there's no re-entry heating, but there is the whole matter of smacking into the surface. So I am going to reserve some fuel in this stage to slow down over there. We could also skip out because we're going so fast. Okay, right there we're less than one hour and 50 minutes total and we'll say that gives us 10 minutes to slow down if we're aiming for two hours. Uh, I think we're probably not gonna make that. We'll see. Okay, head back to Kerbin. Head away from the moon there. Okay, well, we better retro now. And retro in such a way as to not decrease our periapsis. I mean, whether we need to retro or not, I don't know. Maybe not. Well, we're not using all the Delta V here, but... Why does it read 20 on the parachute and 20 on the decoupler, by the way? Still... And that randomly changes. They're at 7 now. <laughs> uh, okay, anyway, but I want to get rid of the stage before we hit the atmosphere. Okay, I'm gonna toss it off now. Oops, I'm trying to use my joystick. No, that's not right. Okay, off it goes. And retrograde. Arm parachute. Uh, 
5,000 meters per second. Can we handle that? 25 kilometer periapsis. Whoa, there goes the stage. I don't know what it's up to. But it's going fast. Okay, we are slowing down. Seems fine, actually. Wait till we get re-entry eating, though. Gotta be a whole new world. We are gonna come down. So no problems there. Oh, parachute's a little bit early. <laughs> parachute's way early. Uh, default numbers for that might... Uh, shoot safety, none. Not the best policy. Well, one hour and 51 minutes. Okay. We have our parachute. Alright, and touchdown. We will say to lunar orbit and back with a Kerbal in 1 hour and four, 54 minutes. 1 hour and 54 minutes with Valentina. And yeah, I'm sure other people have done this sort of challenge and gone faster. Uh, but that is what we've got and it was an interesting test, especially initially when the rocket kept exploding. So uh, we eventually found out the trick to make it work out for us. And yeah, some optimization could happen to get us there faster, but there, there are limits. We'll see. But for now, I think this was an interesting little mission, and I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.